Today's video is all about Sturgis. We're gonna be giving you some great information. Not everything that we're gonna talk about might pertain to you, but I guarantee we'll have something in the video today that's gonna to help you with the 84th Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. So stay tuned and find out what we have to say. We got a countdown right now to the motorcycle rally. How many more days we got? Just a little over 100, how about that? That's right, so we don't know exactly what day I'm gonna put the video out, so it's somewhere between uh, about 104 to 106 days before <laughs> Sturgis happens. So we just need to count down and start thinking about about 100 days away. There you go. First thing I wanna talk about is the dates of the motorcycle rally. Everybody knows the official dates are. August 2nd through the 11th. But they also have the weekend before is actually pre-rally for Black Hills Harley-Davidson, which brings in about 75% of their vendors, might even be more this year, that'll be showing up for that event. So it actually almost starts now a whole week before, and that dates are? July 27th and 28th is when the pre-rally is at Black Hills Harley-Davidson, exit at 55, rally at exit 55. And also remember, just because we said those two days, they actually, those vendors will be open the whole week, all the go. way up to opening day at the motorcycle rally. You know, the number one question that I get asked, actually, I've got a couple of these questions, so I'm just gonna put this one as the number one, is people say, where should I stay for the motorcycle rally? You know, that all depends on a lot on what the heck you wanna do, because this actually covers how many states? Uh, probably about three states yeah. in Wyoming, a lot of cities. South Dakota? Montana? All are involved with the motorcycle rally. You might be saying, what do you mean by that? There's events going on in all those different states that not necessarily part of the Sturgis rally, but it is the events that are happening during the rally. So that kind of makes it, there's a lot of things to do. So you got to kind of decide, which is what we did. The very first year we went out there, we actually stayed in Sturgis. And the reason was because we thought everything was going to be in Sturgis. Yeah, we didn't know anything else. Sturgis was a motorcycle rally, and that's where you had to be. So after that, we kind of learned. So if you're wanting to stay, you know, if, let's say you want to see the bands. You know, you're going to go out to the Buffalo Chip, and you're going to go over to Full Throttle Saloon. You're going to go to Iron Horse. You're going to go to the Knuckle. You want to hang out on Main Street. Then you want to stay as close as possible to downtown Sturgis. That's right. The reason for that is? Well, because one, don't know how much you want to drink. Two, you'll have an ample way to get back and forth to wherever you're at to the event you want to go to. And three, there's animals out there that you need to watch. So you don't want to be going to a concert at the Buffalo Chip and you're staying out in Hill City or Custer and it's dark, it's and all those animals are trying to cut across you and you don't want to have an accident on your way home. A lot of people do die during the Sturgis Bike Week. I'm you know, just about every year there's at least one. And usually 90% of them are because they've hit an animal or they've kind of avoided an animal, hit a guardrail or something like that. So that's one of the things we talk about, about riding at night. It, you know, some of the rallies are like this. So you got to kind of stay away from that. Another thing you have to think about is, hey, maybe I'm a big gambler. Where the heck would I like to stay if I gamble all the time? Down in Deadwood. Deadwood, they have all those gambling facilities. You can go down there. And let's say you want to go out and ride all day and you want to gamble all and party all night. Deadwood's your spot. That's where you need to stay. We stayed in Rapid City. And the reason was because we wanted to kind of do all those rides over there. You know, you're close to the Badlands. You're close to Custer State Park, which isn't very far away. You're also closer to Iron Mountain and Needles Highway. So all of that area, you're a lot closer to. You're Mount also, Rushmore, you're also Badlands. All that area is kind of on that side of Sturgis. That would so, be the east side, I guess, of Sturgis. So if you're wanting to do more of that, that's kind of maybe where you want to stay to where you still could come in during the day. You're about, you're a little over 20 miles if you're staying in Rapid, Rapid City. City versus coming downtown. And like I say, there's a highway that you can take, but like I say, even the animals run across the highway. That's true. So you've got to be very cautious about that. You know, you might be somebody that says, hey, you know, I want to stay out by Spearfish because I want to be closer to Spearfish Canyon. I want to be a little closer to Devil's Tower out that way. You know, uh, Sundance is out that way. A whole bunch of neat things are going on out that direction too. So it's kind of like, you just got to kind of think, hey, what do I want to do? Like I say, the biggest thing I always talk about is what goes on downtown. You don't really want to be down there, like she said earlier, driving all the way back to Custer after a concert after midnight. Right. That would be very dangerous. Plus, if you've had any drinking, you know, all that. You know, a lot of the campgrounds, if you bought a pass, like at the Buffalo Chip, you bought a ticket to for the campground, you actually get to stay all night, which is well worth it if you're going to stay all the way to the bitter end. Something to think about if you've already bought that ticket for Jelly Roll or Kid Rock or something like that. That's one of the options that they give you there. Next thing we want to talk about is what's some of the best times to do some of the riding that we're going to be doing while we're out in the Black Hills? Because first off, if you've never been to Sturgis, 
there is hundreds and hundreds of places that you can ride and have a great time. Even some of the back roads, we made a few wrong turns at time, went through a subdivision. I'm like, holy crap, we could crank. If there's no kids out there, we could do some leaning in these. So you just never know. It's just the Black Hills is just endless. So one of the things we want to talk about first off is a lot of people like to come over a weekend. You know, hey, I'm only going to do three days or I'm only going to do four days. You know, that really is a very short time to be spending at the Sturgis Rally. Now, one of the things you have to watch on is the weekend. Saturday and Sunday is really one of the days that I highly recommend you shouldn't really do some of the busy rides. Iron Mountain, Needles Highway. Spearfish uh, Canyon. That's all. <laughs> what the problem with that is, is besides having motorcycles, this is a very big tourist area. You know, coming over the Sturgis Rally, a lot of people will come out, they don't even know there's a motorcycle rally, and they took their vacation and they're out there driving on those roads and things like that. So it's not uncommon for Iron Mountain Needles Highway, you could spend 45 minutes to an hour just trying to get through each tunnel because it's just chaos. The, the eye of the needle, it's so thin, you can only go one way each way to where if you get a few cars in there and they're slowing down and going slow, it just backs up all the bikes. Plus people want to stand in there and they want to take pictures and all that stuff. And it really, really backs up on the weekends. Or so you, you get some crazy person in a RV or a U-Haul trailer and think they can get through the eye of the needle, you cannot do that. That's right. Very <laughs> few places if you're not on a motorcycle to turn around. And one of the other neat things about Iron Mountain and Needles Highway is there's a lot of turnouts and there's some really cool places to stop and get some pictures or just take a little break, have a cold drink or something while you're sitting there waiting on, on what's, you know, let some of the traffic go by, check out some of the bikes and stuff on there. Just don't zip through the road and say, okay, I got it, fun, fun. And we're going to be showing you a lot of that as we get going here uh, on our video series here coming up on Sturgis and all the great things that are happening there. Yeah, you want to take in all the scenery and the beauty that's up there in the Black Hills. It's really great. So one of the things we want to talk about, there is a special Sunday on the first weekend, August 4th. That's, right. that's a really special day. What do you get on that day? You get to get into the federal parks. So that would include the Badlands or Devil's Tower. Or It includes both of them, but you can't probably do both in the same day. They're too you could, far apart. You'd have to hustle. Yeah. <laughs> Drive fast. <laughs> oh, so You get a free entrance, and everybody's included on that. That's National Park Day. There's about six dates through the year that they open all the national parks. Now, the bad news is Mount Rushmore is actually free to get in, but they charge you to park. That's right. So there's a fee there, and that has nothing to do with being a federal park if you've got a pass or anything like that. Oh, by the way, you got one of those federal passes. The America Beautiful Pass. If you have one of those, then you can go. You don't have to go on the 4th to get in for free. You can get in for free with your America the Beautiful Pass. Every day. Every day. And that's everybody that's in your car, usually. I don't think you could say a group of motorcycles that could get in. Probably not. Custer State Park and also part of Needles Highway is part of the Custer State Park. So you have to pay to go through those. Nice thing about it is if you pay for the pass, it's good for seven consecutive days. So you can come back every day if you want. You know, So that's one of the things you want to think about. And typically they used to give it, which I, we're never out there during the rally because we go and do our ride way before, before to show you what you need to see and when you need to go and all that kind of great stuff. So we're not necessarily able to show you that or tell you the, what the price is. But years ago, they used to give a discount for motorcycles. Last few years, we've always gone a couple weeks before to give you these great videos and it was around 20 bucks per bike or $25 per bike yes. they don't give any discount for seniors now if you are state park doesn't really give you any breaks for anything they don't give you any discounts that we know of at this point now you can buy a pass for the whole year and it's a better deal but if you're only out there during Sturgis it doesn't go from one year to the next it's just for 2024 2025 now the federal parks if you're in the service not retired are a veteran but if you're in the service serving, you get in free for all the federal parks. Also, if you've got a car full of people, they all get in for free for your family members. So that's good with federal. But I mean, I don't know how many guys actually have the time that they can take, get a leave and get out and go able to do that. You know, one of the best things to do if you're going to be doing rides, is, especially if you're going to do iron, well, well, pretty much any of these rides we're talking about, get your butts up early. <laughs> if you want to go down to Custer State Park and you want to see the bison roaming through the through the territory, you got to get there before 9 a.m. And we're going to be showing you a video soon uh, as we get to Sturgis. We'll be on Sturgis already on June 10th to be able to show you uh, the best ways to drive, the best routes to take, all the different things that are going to be going on. But if you want to do Iron Mountain Needles Highway, same thing, even on a Saturday, if you get your butts up and you're out there by 8 o'clock, you're probably going to beat the majority of the people. Problem is, most people don't get up till 11 o'clock. By the time they, time they get out, it's noon, 1 o'clock. something to eat. And... By the time they're out there on the road. And so, yes, it's chaos out there. There's a lot of bikes, a lot of people. Just It's just, I always avoid... It's not as enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. 
So those are one of the things to think if you are during the busier times. And if you're in Sturgis, you know that Mondays and Tuesdays is a really good time to do a, a bike ride during the week of, of Sturgis to get your butts out there. But once again, get out there early. So to get out there so you're not, you're not sitting in all that traffic and all that stuff. Here's another one of the really big questions that we get asked, and I see this on every Facebook page. What should I bring for gear and what kind of weather can we expect? You know, one year we went out there. It was cold. <laughs> it was like 34 at night, and I was all concerned about getting the air conditioner in that cabin, and I should have asked for the heater. <laughs> so we've seen in the 30s, we've seen snow flurries. This is in August. And we've also been out there when it's been about 110 degrees. Uh, one year, a couple years ago, it was 105 pretty much the whole way through the rally. rally. The other thing you have to add to it is the humidity. If you're coming from Florida, you're coming from one of the southern states, it's not a big deal. But from us coming from Arizona, the humidity can really affect our weather. Nice thing is if you're riding your bike, the humidity doesn't really affect you that much except for each time you stop. <laughs> so that's one of the things you have to think about is the weather's going to be all different. So when we typically pack our bikes, we bring a pair of tennis shoes, we bring our riding boots, we bring some jeans. We really don't bring any shorts unless you're looking to maybe go swimming in one of the lakes or something like that. The, the other thing is we bring, uh, we bring our coats in layers. So we have a hoodie, we have a little bit heavier coat that we put on top of that. So if we have extra cold weather, bring several different style pairs of gloves to make sure you keep your hands warm. We actually bring our three quarter helmets and our full face helmets. Now, like I say, we're not riding the bike every year no more, but even when we rode the bike, a lot of times we'd bring the half helmets, we'd strap those to the bag or put them in a bag and wear the full face helmets while we're riding. So that way, because like I say, if you get out there and it's rainy and cold or hail, we've rode in hail before out in Sturgis, actually a couple of times now, <laughs> we've been caught in the hail. So you want to be able to be prepared to where you can switch le leathers. Uh, now we don't go with leathers. We, we do have leather chaps that we wear at times when it gets really cold. Uh, not last, the jackets. But yeah, we don't carry the jackets just because the leather too jackets. Bulky. Way too much room. We, you know, if you're riding your bike out and you're if you're too up, you, you only got limited amount of room to bring stuff. That's right. So we really pack tight and all that. And Tam will do a, a video here real soon showing you how to pack uh, some of the bags and things like that to where two people can get pretty good. But typically when we go out, typically what we've done in the past, when we used to do it, we took two weeks off from work. We took about three days to get there, three days to get home, and there a full week when we're in Sturgis. So, and then during that time, usually she has to do laundry one day. We have to go to the laundry mat and get all the laundry done. Uh, so she'll show you how we do it to do a week. But that's just one of the things. And you also, one of the last things is you got to bring your rain gear. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. You forgot one of the most important things to bring is the rain gear. And you got to make sure you bring a good quality rain gear. Watch some of the stuff they're selling on eBay and Amazon. Some of the stuff is so thin that we bought the uh, first time we did it. The first year it was really good. The second year we were soaked. I think the rain, we were more soaked inside than on the outside of the rain gear. Just remember, you get what you pay for. So right. if you get a really good deal on a rain suit, it's probably not going to keep you very dry. And also on mine, I ride in the front when we were two up. I ride in the front. I've actually got the ones that go over my boots. So we kind of protect that so it gets good. So she's got rubber boots that she can bring. We Some galoshes. Yeah, so we haven't done that. Another big concern that I've heard a lot of people talk about, and that is what's going on with Highway 385. 385 is basically a very good highway that a lot of people ride. It goes from Custer, the city of Custer, all the way to Spearfish canyon and that's a very busy road that is completely under construction at this time first thing i want to tell you is all the construction per the state of south dakota is stops during the motorcycle rally unless something drastically a bridge falls down or something like that you're not going to see any construction workers out during the rally time that's from friday to uh that sunday okay. you're not going to see any construction sites at all so now this road which we did we went out i guess two years ago and there was some of that road was tore up two years ago rocks. and then last year there it had gotten a little bit better so there is times that you may be riding on rocks on the 385 things like that there is also plenty of bypasses that you don't even have to get on the 385 but when we get there in june we'll be showing you that route we'll, we'll be riding it and we'll also ride it right before the rally again to give you an idea of what kind of condition it is in should i should i just bypass it can i just enjoy riding on that so the construction started right after the bike week last year 
So as soon as that was over, they went out and already started construction. And you know, they get a lot of snow out there, so when the snow's happening, they're not doing much work on it. So the idea was, it was they estimated about a year and a half to completely get it done. So we're gonna probably be maybe three quarters of the way by the time we hit Sturgis again. So that'll be pretty good. So like I say, we'll give you a full update on that so you'll know what that is. We'll also show you any other construction sites that have problems a couple years ago out by Nemo, screwing some of the back roads there. A lot of the bridges were out. They were all up a couple, two years ago, they were back all up and going again. So we'll show you all, all that, that construction stuff. they had on the 90 there at kickstands. I think it's exit 37. That was under construction. We kind of showed you what to expect when you got there. Hopefully that'll be all done this year. Now the new highway that's gonna cut through there, the 79, they're moving the 79 from at Kickstand's exit there all the way to Buffalo Chip. They're gonna be moving the 79. They haven't done any work on that road between the Buffalo and Kickstand's yet. So don't be, don't be thinking that's a whole new road coming in there. And we'll talk about that road when we get to Sturgis too. We rode, we ride that road all the time. We ride it in the rain, we rode it in water. We rode it with semi trucks following behind them. So we've rode that road. It's not as bad as everybody makes it sound. If you've never ridden on a road like that, probably shouldn't ride on it. But I mean, it's, it's just like riding on a gravel road, but it's just fine and it, get, it can get slippery. But we'll talk about that in another video. So I did some checking just last week on the campgrounds. Cause you know, what are we thinking for the 84th rally? Well, one of the things I'm thinking is this is going to be a very smaller group of people that's gonna to come to the rally this year. And you're like, no, Bob, why do you even say something like that? How do you know? The way I know is basically calling these campgrounds up. So I've already contacted several campgrounds already this week. One, I contacted Pappy Hoyle. I also checked out Glencoe, and I also checked out the Buffalo Chip. They've still got full hookups in most of those campgrounds. Buffalo Chip doesn't have as many full hookups as Pappy Hoyle and Glencoe has. They still have a lot of full hookups with sewer and everything else to check out. We also have Kickstands in Shade Valley. He checked in on those also, and they still have some full hookups available. So it's that's why I'm saying right now it's not going to be right at this moment, unless everybody watches the video and they decide <laughs> to go ahead and book. At the last minute. One of the other campgrounds, <clears throat> which is usually sold out right away, which I can't believe they've still got sites, is Days Inn Campground. They normally sell out right away. Now, if you're looking for a cabin, we found actually from Neil, uh, from Alaska, he kind of went on and told me the other day, he called and found out that Susie's campground, which is real close to Kathmandu, where yeah. we're staying at, they actually have what? Cabins left, and they're only $1,200 for the rally, which is a pretty decent price for cabins. That's right. And uh, the last we heard, he had them all available. So we've only let a few people know as up until this point. So if you're interested, you better get on the phone right now and give him a call <laughs> and tell him, hey, I want one of those campgrounds. I want one of those cabins. cabins. So you can get all hooked up. And that's a great location. It's right down the street from Kathmandu. Kathmandu doesn't have any full hookups left. They've got a couple electric. Uh, everybody, no matter what you say, everybody's going to have tent camping. That's Nobody's right. going to turn away anybody for a tent. Now, if you're looking at the Buffalo Chip or you want to stay at Kickstands or one of these ones that have a wristband that you have to buy, you want to buy those as soon as possible because their price is going to go up. For instance, uh, Kickstands, I think they're $225 right now. They were as of when I did this video made it. And But over at the Buffalo Chip, I think it's like $350. Over at Pappy okay. Hoyle, it's $350 for a wristband there. Glencoe is actually $352. Also. Not 352, 350, 350 and also. yeah. <laughs> so just a few prices that I knew of as of right now, not saying they're going up. That's just for tent camping, but there's plenty of places that only charge you for the price of the tent. You know, maybe it's ten dollars, fifteen, twenty, thirty, depending on what you are. Lampshire, when I looked at theirs the other day, I think they were around thirty dollars per but it's per person for a camp for a tent. Okay bringing that up. You know, also, if you're looking to rent a tent, you can always go out to Camp Easy Ride. That's right. They're, they're going to be at the Buffalo Chip, and they're going to have three ways you can stay at the Buffalo Chip through Camp Easy Ride. So look at CampEasyRide.com if you want somebody that just wants to ride out, bring my clothes, and I want somebody else to set it all up for me and give me entertainment and all that kind of good stuff. There you also, go. Also a party bus. The other thing I want to talk about is there also is a bus that shuttles you around, but it only goes certain places. Like a lot of people say, hey, can it, will it take me out to Spearfish? Will it take me over here? No, it's it's the, the bus. Now they had some passes, which I don't know if it's still on sale. I think they were about $90 for the whole rally per person. And it would take you to all these different stops. Went to a lot of the, all the campgrounds that we just rattled off their names. They go to all that. They do not go to Rapid City. 
I think they do have a bus once or twice a day that goes to Deadwood, but I think that's as far out as they go with the, the bus. You can go on their website. Uh, on our Facebook page, I kind of put something up. Maybe if I can find it, I'll flash the map up here and show you where they go up at. If I don't, you didn't see it. It's also go, another bus, Jonesy's. Yeah, Jonesy's is another bus that's going on. <laughs> Actually, somebody contacted me the other day and said they're going to be running a bus, which I can't remember what his name was, but they're going to have another bus. If he gonna... finds it, he'll put it down here. <laughs> yeah, so you can put it down here in the comments and let us. This is a great time if you haven't booked to start getting ready to get booked up for Sturgis. So like I say, this is going to be very big. Next year, the 85th is probably going to be blown out. Uh, one of the reasons I'm thinking this year is not going so crazy is the Buffalo chip is not really, you know, other than the two main acts, Jelly Roll and, and Kid Rock, those are their two main headliners at the moment. There's a few other bands scattered in there. They don't even have the first Saturday booked yet. So a lot of people are sitting back probably thinking, okay, who's going to come this year? Who's going to be there? Who's that? Now, one of the other things that I want to mention is the Knuckle. It's owned by a new group of people that own that. A new guy owns that. Also, over at the Iron Horse, both of those two have kicked up the concerts this year. I think uh, the Knuckles got Quiet Riot coming yeah, out. Quiet Riot. And uh, over at um, Iron Horse, they've got uh, Ellis, I can't think of what her name is, but she sings X's and O's. And she's got about four or five good hits. And then they have Hairball there that comes yeah. to the Iron Horse. And those are all free concerts. Now you can get a VIP offer package if you'd like, to but you don't have to pay for it if you don't want. So those are venues that are really kicking it up this year. And I think a lot of it's got to do with the new knuckle taking over, that they've listed some of these great new bands that they're having for free, that the Iron Horse has said, hey, we're gonna have to start putting some decent names in here. We're not gonna get anybody to come see us over here. Yep. So that may be a great year if you're staying around downtown, you'll be able to see and hear some great bands for free. One of the things I want to tell you about Sturgis is there's a lot of different planned rides that are going on during that time. One of them is the Chief's Ride that he has during the week. That's the Wednesday before the rally starts. So that's going to be on July 31st. So if you're there early, you can ride with the Chief and do the ride that he does. And they have some different other rides over at the Buffalo Chip. There's a Rusty Wallace ride. There's the Legends Ride out of Deadwood, the world famous Legends Ride. They got the Ladies Ride. Uh, the Biker's Bells that goes on they've got a whole endless amount of rides that go out of there so you might once they get their websites all up in the buffalo chip you might be able to check on that already with their dates but we notice the city doesn't have theirs updated yet so we want to just kind of let you know that that's not happening yet if you go on the website right as as of today it was still all 2023 dates that were going what they have on their website so hopefully they'll change that soon yep look at that updated now, one of the other things we don't know about yet is a lot of you may have heard about the AMA race they were going to have downtown on Sunday. Well, they had a vote on it through the city council and through the city, and at this moment, nobody has any idea what's going on with the race. So there could be a race on Sunday, or there may not be. <laughs> so we've got a call in that we've talked to the city. They don't seem to know anything yet. So we're waiting for the AMA to get a hold of us. We've made our phone calls now. We're waiting for them to get back to us. So we'll be able to let you know soon if they're, what's going on with the AMA race. If you decide you want it, or if you don't care about it, it was going to be the last Sunday of the rally. It's going to be televised too on Fox That's Sports. Right. That's right. So when we talk about the other distance areas where they have stuff going on, one of the neat things which we're going to be at this year is on a Wednesday of the rally, it is the Ham Jam out in Hewlett. Wyoming. That's right. So we're going to go all the way over to Wyoming to check that out. That's a great event. A lot of fun. They roast some big giant pigs out there. It's great food. It's all free. They do ask for a donation, which you definitely need to help them out because it's just it's just a group there. They have a band playing. So that's what they call it, the Ham, Ham Jam. Ham. <laughs> so it's a great event. We're going to be there during the day. So come on out and see us out there. Another event, which we're not doing the last couple of years, we haven't done it. And that's Topless Tuesday. Uh, that's out there in Alzada, Montana. So that's taking you over to Montana. That's a long ride out. We will be doing a video real soon. You can actually, maybe I'll put it up here. We got a video that's gone viral, thanks to them, that uh, will that you can check out and see a little bit of the pre stuff of what's going on, how crowded. And we'll go from there on another video. So on that same Tuesday that they have Topless Tuesday, that's Military Appreciation Day for the city of Sturgis. They have all kinds of events. They've actually dedicated some statues and stuff and some signs down there in Harley Davidson Square. And they also have the military flyover. So that's pretty exciting. We've so, always missed it. So we want to make sure we get it this year. So that's another place you can find us at. Now, another thing that actually is on Thursday is actually the Buffalo Chips Freedom Fest. And what goes on there is we got a really great thing because actually Mike, Mike 
from our group that's been done some of the lives that we've done and stuff. And he got married be, last year. Yep. He's gotten <laughs> tied in with the military because he was in the military. And we're going to have a swearing in. So they'll be inducted into the armed forces. Hopefully we're going to have a variety of them. We'll have some big general there. Uh, we may end up having a fly over there. They're working on that too. So that'll be pretty neat. And that's before Kid Rock and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be a great night. Thursday we'll, at the Buffalo Chip. Just another night to celebrate with our veterans and give a salute and appreciation to all their hard work and for our freedom here in the United States. For all of those that have given their lives, for all those that are still serving, and those that are about to serve. So this is just our first video for the 2024 Sturgis 84th Motorcycle Rally. Nobody's going to give you the coverage that we are giving you. Why? Because we're getting there on June 10th this That's year. That's right. So we're getting earlier than we've ever been before. And you're thinking, why the heck are you people getting there so early? Well, we've been contacted and got to chat with a couple of our subscribers that have lived there their whole life. A couple of them ride motorcycles every weekend. And they've promised to take me on some rides that nobody knows about, unless you're local. So we're going to be showing you those rides. So if you're looking for something different, something a unique ride, we're going to be showing those in June. We're also going to take you around and show you uh, some different ways. You know, almost everybody, when they go out to the Badlands, what do they do? They just jump on the 90 and they go all the way out there nonstop. You know, maybe they stop at Walls Drugs. But I mean, who wants to ride on the highway? We're going to take you a couple different ways. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down to how long it takes us how many miles it is to get to these destinations. We're also going to tell you how many miles it is on that ride, like Iron Mountain. We'll give you exactly the miles from start to finish. We'll give you all the different roads. Spearfish, we'll show you where all the waterfalls, there's three waterfalls. A lot of people get confused about the last two because they're across the street from each other. And we're going to try to find that devil's bathtub. We're yeah. going to find it this year. Somebody's going to give us a hike to it, to it, but see if she can make all that long walk over no, there. put on my boots. It's like a mile and a half or so, I think, is, is to get the devil's bathtub. So we'll get there and we'll show you where that's at. Maybe we can get some four wheelers to take us out. We'll make it up to Hippie Hollow. Oh, that's cool. up in the hills, so we'll see if we can get someone to take us there. We'll show you where that's at. A little tough for motorcycles unless you got an off-road bike. Myron, wink, wink. So those are some great things we're going to show you. So before the Sturgis Rally, we have Adventure Bike Week. And that's in July. We'll give you some dates there. We'll be covering that too. If you've got an adventure bike or, hey, I'm thinking about an adventure bike, they've got some classes and all kinds of events going on there. It's, this will be the third year. We've covered it all two years. It's our third year. First year, we were the only YouTubers out there. There was a few new ones out there last year covering it. And Probably that's all more. out at the Buffalo Chip. And then also what we have out in Deadwood, we have the Three Wheel Rally. That's right. And that's a great event. First year we stayed there, we covered it all nonstop and all that. Basically the last two years, we kind of just stopped in and gave you just a quick glimpse of what's going on but a lot of people we get more and more people now riding on three wheels that's right we're so not got getting that trike, <laughs> come on out here they've also had some can-ams and vander halls and just about any of those can fall into that category but it's basically called the three-wheel rally they've been going on now i think it's 13 or 14 years they've been doing that event and that's about two weeks before the rally starts so that's just another event we'll be giving you some information on that as we get closer but you can go to their websites and you can already see the stuff that they're advertising for that so you can type in Three Wheel Rally in Deadwood, and they've got a Facebook page and a website, and also does the Buffalo Chip, because that's where they're going to have the Adventure Bike Week. Okay. It's out there. It's not a week. It's just a weekend. It's three or four days. It goes on. Both of those are the same thing. There's just three or four days. But if you're in the area, it's just a great another event to check out that's more, you know, it's a little bit of motorcycling. That's right. Let me know down here in the comments what you think about this information we gave you. Did we give you something you didn't know about? Did you already know it all? If you did, maybe you need to start coming out and helping us film. There you go. <laughs> if you already got it all down already. And uh, every year we find out people that have been going 40 or 50 years to the rally and they come up to us and say, wow, you showed us something on your video that we didn't even know about. And we appreciate that. We like everybody letting us know we do these videos for you guys and girls. We want to give you all the great information. So when you get to the largest motorcycle rally in the United States, Sturgis, you've got a good understanding of, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to do this and this and this. You know, there's some things we might miss because you just can't cover everything. Some things don't actually are going till the rally starts right. so it kind of makes it a little tough to cover that even if you were going out there today there's already things that are already still open year-round the iron horse is open the knuckles open loud america is open louis diner is open so you can go to all of those things and there's probably some other bars there that we, we forgot about that's not open. Also, the Sidehack. winery out there is open. The brewing house out there at the end of Junction. Yep. The Sturgis Brewing House, they're open year-round. So there's a lot of things that are open no matter what. 
they're very limited maybe what's going on at the iron horse they only have the main section of the bars open uh, the knuckles same thing only their main restaurant and bars open there's not much going on in the outside but they do have special events all year long so there's a lot of things to do so when people say well you know what's going to be open if i come three or four weeks or if i stay the week after well the difference is if you stay the week after it's it's like a ghost town. <laughs> there really isn't anybody there. If you come out there on Monday or Tuesday and we've been there and it's for us, it's kind of sad that everybody's gone and packed up. The party's over. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, there's not a whole lot, but I can say you can still get a meal at all those places. You know, McDonald's is still open. Burger King's still open. Pizza, Pizza Ranch, Ranch is still open. Uh, Full Throttle Saloon, their saloon part, uh, the bar is open year round too. Also out at the Buffalo Chip, they open up about a month before the rally starts and they're open a few weeks afterwards uh, out front. Big Engine Bar. They're open for those times too. So if those are places you can still stop at. There won't be a lot of action going on. But downtown, you'll see some maybe some of the locals coming in. Uh, Loud American's got a pretty good crowd, so does a knuckle. Uh, they serve food all year round, so that's something worth stopping in and checking out if you're in that area. We're gonna go ahead and leave you right here. Look at this beautiful water we got behind you. That's right. We're actually still in Florida. We're getting ready for the <coughs> Leesburg Bike Fest, which is gonna be starting here in about a week, and we'll be over there. And then right after that, we go right to Panama City. That'll be back to back, and then back to back to that is Myrtle Beach for their bike week. So we've got a lot of stuff coming and a lot of videos coming. And meanwhile, in between the breaks, we'll be giving you out a video on Sturgis getting ready. We've kind of made all of our contacts today, talked to a bunch of people from the city today, got what we could about the race, and anything else that's going on. So we'll be able to give you a lot more stuff. Hopefully the Buffalo Chip will get, we're trying to get a hold of him. He didn't call me back today. We wanted to find out what's going on with their concerts. And a lot of people are saying, well, you know, they're having trouble because of concerts booking. You know, a lot of these other places are booking up with concerts too. So I don't really know, I don't really know what's going on at the Buffalo Chip. Why they haven't announced the big concerts, the rest of the big concerts. Normally the Saturday is their biggest one. Uh, last year was Thursday was the biggest concert that That's they right. had last Death year Leopard. was the biggest turnout for people coming. So I think this year will be the same thing. I think Kid Rock on Thursday will be a big crowd. Tuesday is going to be a big crowd with Jelly Roll. But I mean, I don't know what's going to happen the first weekend and I don't know what's going to happen on the second weekend. So we'll have to wait. Stay tuned to see what else we're going to tell you about the most updates we can get to you. That's right. So we want to thank you for hanging out with us. Let us know your comments, concerns. If you've got any questions that we haven't answered yet, we'll be glad to answer them for you. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Share us with your family and friends. Give us a big thumbs up. Ring that bell for notifications. And we'll see you on the next video. And remember, it's all starting right now. We're starting with the Sturgis Rally. If you're thinking about going to it or, hey, maybe I want to go on the 85th. We've got a bunch of people coming for the 85th that's going to be meeting us there. So we'll give you all the great updates. So by the time we get done with Sturgis this year, you'll be going, hey, I know what rides I want to do. I know what bars I want to hit. I know where I want to eat. I got all that down. And then you leave a little bit of leeway just in case something new comes up that we don't know about. That's There's right. always something new might happen every year that they try to bring it up. And just like this year, they're trying to get that AMA race going. Don't know if it's going to happen or not, but that's only if you stayed to the last Sunday. So that, we'll see all you guys later. Have a great week. Hopefully it's sunny where you're at. You're able to get that bike out of the garage and go for a nice ride. If it's not, watch us ride tomorrow. We're heading out to uh, Burt's Barracuda. Yep, over to Tampa. We're going to have some surprises coming up on that video, so stay tuned for that.